Ralph Michaels and Dave Koken are the main guests breaking down college hoops from a sports betting perspective on the Wager Talk College Basketball Tip-Off Show for a reason. Last year was the inaugural season of the Tip-Off Show, and we offered an amazing combo deal on Dave and Ralph, and many people are asking, what about this year? We heard you loud and clear, and for a limited time, if you buy one of their college basketball season passes through the national championship, we will include the other through the national championship for only a dollar. A college basketball season pass is priced at $369 per handicapper, but for a limited time, you can get both for only $1 more, locking in Dave Koken and Ralph Michaels for $370, giving you access to Dave and Ralph for nine weeks of college hoops for just over $20 per handicapper per week. Hey guys, welcome in and a very happy Monday to you here as uh, it has begun the craziest, craziest uh, week, uh, at least until next month when we get to March. But uh, of course, Super Bowl week here, it begins a ton of college hoops going on right now. And we've got uh, a nice card here, just about 40 games on the card here tonight. We're going to break down three of these featured matchups with Three of the very best here on a Monday is Drew Martin, Adam Trigger, Tony Mejia in the house, trying to make sense of what was an absolutely crazy weekend in uh, college hoops and a lot of revenge spots here tonight. We've got some of these back to back. Should be a very, very fun card, but uh, on a $9 Monday, let's start at the top here. Drew, number one, tell us what you got locked and loaded. For nine dollar Monday and seconds, give us a little something that you learned here this weekend. Sure, Joe. Nine dollar Monday got a play up. I really like a sharp angle looking to play. So uh, that's available wagertalk.com. And in terms of uh, what I learned th this past week, I'd probably say the Mountain West is is playing really good basketball here. And a team that I talked about on the show, Joe. Uh, we've broken down a couple of their games and also on the new show uh, Under the Radar on the Wager Talk YouTube channel, guys. The UNLV running Rebels, really, really good. I think they're riding under the radar against the spread. Of course, pretty much their whole team has had COVID-19 now back and fully healthy. Um, and I think they're riding under the radar here, Joe. Um, they've won some key games, beating Nevada, Colorado State. They had to go on the road to Logan, Utah, and they dropped a, a game to Utah State. Who the, the Aggies are really good this year. So I, I actually think it gives us some value here on UNLV this upcoming week in a revenge spot against Air Force, uh, what, Tuesday or Wednesday night this upcoming week. So look to bet on the UNLV running Rebels, Joe, is, the way, uh, is, is one thing I learned this past week. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. A lot of a uh, lot of teams there trying to make statements early on in the Mountain West for sure. Talk to us here, Trig. Nine dollar Monday. Tell us what you got locked and loaded, and what did you learn this uh, this weekend? Well, Joe, first nine dollar Monday. Uh, I have my Super Bowl play up uh, for nine bucks. It is you know one thing I had had a really good NFL season, really good football season in general. Uh, I think fifty eight point one percent in the NFL right now. And that's going to be anything I got for the Super Bowl is going to go on that. So uh, I know the only play I'll actually have is, is the one I've posted. But, you know, if I come across any like sharp info on props or stuff like that, uh, I won't make official plays on it, but I will include it in the analysis. So I'm just going to kind of throw everything I've got for the Super Bowl in there. Um, and you know, you'll, you'll see all the info I have for it. Uh, it's, it's up for nine bucks. And I believe that one will be up for nine dollars all week. So. Uh, if you're looking for my take on the Super Bowl, uh, that's what I have up for $9. As far as what I've learned, um, listen, this has been an absolutely dismal college basketball season for me up to this point. Uh, and what I've learned, and maybe should have learned a little sooner, is the way we, we've typically made money in the past, college hoop, kind of finding good spots to fade, you know, quote unquote, the, the better teams against the number, is just not working this year. Um, it's like there's it's like these top teams are 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 not immune to a letdown uh and not only do they they win 
they win and just cover con- constantly. So, you know, what I what I learned, and I'll get into this more when we talk Texas and Kansas, is it's really tough to go against the quote unquote better team unless you're doing it in like an Auburn, Georgia type scenario where where you're you're trying to beat sort of like a massive number. Uh that's a little different. But just like you know, Kentucky, Alabama comes to mind over the weekend. Uh, you know, tough spot for Kentucky having to go on the road. They win no problem. Uh, the one I was talking about with you guys before I came on the air, Wyoming, should have been in a brutal spot yesterday, having to play on the road at Fresno State after winning against Colorado State and Boise State earlier in the week. Two huge wins for them, playing like their third game in I think maybe six or seven days a team that typically struggles a little bit on the road because they have such a big home court advantage with the altitude uh, that they're, they're usually a little overvalued on the road just hasn't mattered. Um, so that's something I think I've, I've learned personally uh, and that I'm going to tweak a little bit is, you know, the spot does not necessarily justify a play and I'll get into that more in Kansas, Texas, but you know, that's, that's where, where I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment uh, going forward here. All right, good stuff there. Love it. Uh, It is uh, certainly a marathon, not a sprint here, Tony uh, Mejia. So talk to us here about $9 Monday. What do you got locked and loaded? And uh, give us something you took away here and what you learned this weekend. Well, I hope everybody had a great weekend. Mine was all right. I'm still uh, annoyed by my 5% loss. I hate losing 5% games on Friday, but I had a good weekend. Friday was the Denver and New Orleans uh, NBA game that just didn't sneak over the posted total like I hoped for. Uh, so slumping on that, but I mean, it's been a really good ride on, in both of those sports and in soccer of late. Um, I'm doing well in February, uh, just trailing my buddy Ralph Michaels uh, over the last week in college hoops. So we're up to, you know, 60% accuracy and I, I'm a volume guy. So that that's good for me and nearly uh, 30 units. So uh, up on that. And uh, what did I learn? I learned that Houston is untouchable in the American, which isn't a good thing for the American, considering uh, mm-hmm. where we were with that conference going into the season where we expected Memphis uh, to be a world beater, given you know their re- recruiting prowess. And they've obviously been terrible, uh, especially by expectations. Uh, and and uh, UCF struggling. Uh, their talent level should uh, have them much higher than they are right now. Did it with Wichita State. Uh, so a team we're going to talk about today, the Temple Owls, are making noise up there. But that's an NIT team at best as well. SMU, mm-hmm. probably uh, an NIT team too. So you're looking at a one and done. But that one is a really good team in Houston. And you have to tip your hat to Kelvin Sampson because he had a situation happen where he lost two of his top scores uh, within a, a two-day span right around the holiday. Um, Marcus Sasser, arguably their best player. Uh, he's out for the season. So is Tremont Mark, one of their best shooters. And they picked up the pieces with Adam Kessler. Edwards came back from a, an ankle injury probably earlier than he should have, but he's been uh, the focal point of that team. And they destroyed Cincinnati uh, in Cincy yesterday. It was never really close. And that was uh, their primary competition outside of the Mustangs uh, coming into uh, you know the, the bulk of February. So uh, Houston doing really well. American, a one-bid league. $9 Monday uh, college package up with a 4% uh, headlining that and the NBA to follow soon. Yeah, that's uh, that Houston team is no joke, man. They are not messing around. Uh, but neither are we. We got some huge matchups here today, guys. So let's dive into featured game number one. And where better to start than the Red Hot Kansas Jayhawks? Fresh off that ass whooping, they handed Baylor there at home. Now they got to travel to Austin, take on Texas. Texas opening up as, uh, well, it uh, looks like a one and a half point uh, dog originally. And uh, now that seems to have, uh, well, that seems to have flipped now because Texas is a point and a half and 136 is an opening. Um, this has been all over the place here. Flip flop city, Drew. Here's what we know. Both teams coming off big wins on Saturday as Texas took down Iowa State and, of course, Kansas taking down Baylor. So what do you think we're going to get in this matchup tonight, 9 o'clock tip? Sure, Joe. I mean, uh, you kind of alluded to it. You know, tough, tough to step in front of the Kansas Jayhawks, one of the better teams in the country, hot right now. But, of course, the Texas Longhorns, what, winning four of their last five against a uh, difficult Big 12 schedule here. They also beat the Tennessee Volunteers, not a bad team themselves. Now catching plus one and a half 
at home. Flip favorite here, guys. Uh, not off of that opening number like Joe touched on. And I love getting one and a half because it just lands on one. You're going to cash that bet. Um, now, Kansas head coach Bill Self, a well-coached team. They are 5-1 and one on the road, a top 80 team tempo-wise, and number three offensive efficiency. I bring up the tempo because, guys, this is a clash of styles here. Kansas is going to look to go up tempo. Texas is going to look to slow it down under head coach Chris Beard in that really good defense, top 10 defensive efficiency. So we get a really good defense versus a really good offense. And we get that really good defense at home. Of course, Chris Beard coming from Texas Tech. Uh, we remember that Red Raider defense. He's trying to do it here in Austin and doing a great job so far. Also with a good point guard, that slow tempo, good defense, and Marcus Carr kind of handling the ball. I like the Texas Longhorns here, Joe. Plus the fact if there's one thing Kansas struggles at, it's turning the ball over offensively. Their guard play isn't necessarily superior to their op opposition in the Big 12. That's where I think the Texas uh, Longhorns take advantage. Turn them over a couple times, plus one and a half, the home dog here. Spot-wise, also good for Texas, uh, just staying at home in the short turnaround for the, Kansas Jayhawk, for the Kansas Jayhawks, having to travel to Austin, Texas after just playing on Saturday night, now the Monday night game. So spot-wise, points towards Texas. Home dog, slowing it down, good defense. Give me the Longhorns, plus one and a half, Joe. All right, going with Texas. I mean, it's it, too crazy. We get a flipped side, and we got a uh, a five point drop in the total too. So uh, that shouldn't yeah. surprise anybody here, I guess. Uh, Trig, due to the fact that we know Kansas likes to go up tempo, Texas ain't gonna want to do that. That's for sure. So who dictates probably is who wins in this game? What do you think we get? Well. First of all, first of all, Joe, this is a, this is precisely what I was talking about in the open. Um, this normally for me, I'd be on Texas here, no brainer, right? Like this theoretically should be an awful spot for Kansas. They just beat Baylor, sort of a you know a team that's had their number the past couple of years, big time, like huge win, and then they have to go on the road two days later to play Texas, a Texas team that's fourteen and one at home. Uh, in, in a big primetime spot, this should be a really tough spot for Kansas. This is what I'm talking about, that just it just hasn't mattered so far this year. Uh, because if you, it, my honest opinion here, Kansas is the better team. So the only thing Texas really has going for them right now is obviously they've played well at home, and it's a no-brainer that the spot favors Texas. The thing that concerns me with Texas here is when they give up points, they lose. Meaning, when their defense can't control a game, it, it, that's when they're going to lose. And that's when they have lost so far this season. In Kansas, I, I would lean toward the Kansas offense probably getting the better, uh, having a better chance to control this game than Texas just being able to sort of, you know, negate everything Kansas can do offensively. Kansas is top 20 offense in the country. They're averaging 80 six points per game i don't know 80 up upwards of 80 points per game uh seventh nationally in field goal percentage uh they they have a bunch of guys that can shoot it and kansas hasn't been really immune to the road letdown much this season they're five and one on the road uh this game actually opened with texas as a favorite and now kansas is the favorite so typically i don't really like to bet against teams when the when the when the number crosses zero again not something that's mattered a ton this year, but historically it does. So even though I 100% agree with Drew, there's no question the spot favors Texas here. I can't find much other, much else that favors Texas from a matchup standpoint. And the way this season is going, it, it's, you know, everyone's going to bet Kansas here. Everyone's probably going to win. That's how it's been going. So I'm not, I'm not willing to buck that right now. Uh, lean texas because of the spot but it's just the way things have gone in college hoop this year it's not enough for to get me to the window yeah it's it's gonna be a, a half court texas wants to slow this down wants to slow them down tony Mejia. they don't want to get up tempo uh and their defense for J uh kansas been a little worse on the road than it's been at uh allen obviously so what do you think here can texas dictate the tempo and take control of this game 
Yeah, well, we'll talk a little total on this. Uh, Texas, obviously, the top scoring defense in the country, just uh, under 55 points per game. Uh, and it's a credit to Chris Beard because he's got, you know, these aren't his guys. These are transfers that he basically cobbled together and some guys that he's inherited uh, from the, uh, you know, on the roster. But you got Timmy Allen coming from Utah, Marcus Carr, obviously spent time in Minnesota as their point guard, Trey Mitchell, um, you know, at UMass, their center. Uh, and, you know, they, they've they gotten the job done defensively, held the Cyclones over the weekend to 41 points and 29% shooting. Uh, so, you know, Kansas, despite destroying Baylor this weekend, really didn't shoot well. I think it was 5 for 20 from beyond the arc. So do you, do you think that uh, Texas is going to be able to dictate pace? I do. Uh, I, I agree with the line movement on that number going from 135-ish to 131, 132. Uh, and I, I still think uh, the low side will prevail because I, I, I do – see Kansas being deliberate in trying to get the best shots and Texas making them work for it. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, at this point, if you're Kansas, you're out a creative playmaker in Remy Martin. I don't think we'll see him today, but they were kind of in a holding pattern without him anyway. Uh, you know, they, they've gotten uh, Joseph Yusufu from uh, from Drake uh, off the bench, give them a spark. And uh, obviously, you know, Jalen Wilson's more of a playmaker the, this season than he was last year. They're using DeWan Harris at the point. So they're not really missing much. And Nagbaji is uh, shooting the lights out from three. So I think what we'll see from Kansas tonight is you go out on the road, you withstand that first punch, and then you dig in uh, for a game that probably comes down to the wire and ends up being very low scoring. So uh, give me the under uh, as my lean tonight. All right, likes the under. 70 is the key number for Kansas. Uh, only been held there four times this season, guys. They lost two of those games. They squeaked out two wins. So Texas holds them to under 70. Got a really good chance of upending them at home. Should be a great matchup. Nine, nine Eastern, I think, is the tip time. Yes, Mejia. One quick thing to, for those uh, who uh, are watching who care, Bill Self, 8-2. and two against uh, yeah. Chris Beard's tech, tech teams. So he, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. There. Hey, damn straight he does. All right, and they're not Chris Beard's <laughs> guys, like you said. All right, let's talk about it. Arizona taking on Arizona State, a rematch from a game uh, just a little over a week or so ago, and it was, whoo, sweat job for Arizona. They eventually pulled away, but it was a grind. Well, now they got to head to Arizona State. Two touchdowns as a... Opening number on this one, total opened at uh, 142. I'm seeing 142 and a half, but that 14 is no longer. It's now 12 as the uh, Arizona State, the Sun Devils, off a triple overtime win against UCLA. So, Trig, here you go. Another spot, right? Where Arizona, bad spot for Arizona State. Let down, right? Then why is the money going towards them? Well, the money, uh, we'll start with that. The money's going toward Arizona because Arizona, in my opinion, has been like their their power rating from the odds makers has been insanely high all season. <laughs> I mean, and even just even just look, and I'm not saying it's not justified. I'm just saying that the books have almost said, you know what, if you're gonna if you're gonna bet us against Arizona, like we're gonna force you to like pay a premium to do it. Uh, just look at Thursday, and I'll use Thursday night's game um, for Arizona as an example. Uh, I think they were minus. I think they went off minus seven against uh, UCLA in that game. Got the money. They won. They won by ten. Uh, but that you know kept me. I liked Arizona on Thursday, and that ultimately kept me off. I was like, man, seven. That just that just seems like that's really a lot to to sort of have to lay in that spot. I think you saw it again over the weekend. Uh, minus 11 against mm. USC. So they're really, the odds makers are really forcing you to, to lay a big number to back Arizona. I think, you know, the, I guess you would call the, the sharper market, the market that hits some of the openers probably said, okay, this number is just out of control. Being at 14, obviously that got kind of gobbled up. You're probably seeing 12, I think maybe even 11 and a half at this mm. point. But in this case, like I don't know that this is a really a letdown spot for Arizona. I actually would say I don't think Arizona played particularly well over the weekend. I mean, that was a much closer game throughout the game as it would be as it was, and then they kind of just pull away and then they win by nine. That wasn't really a nine point game until sort of at the end. The letdown might occur here for Arizona State 
who just had a ridiculous game on Saturday night, uh, three overtimes. They pull off a huge win over UCLA. And, and so now they have to kind of quickly turn around. Granted, it's at home and play Arizona. So I would say Arizona's in more of a letdown spot, maybe more of kind of like a, a fatigue type spot, having to play three overtimes. Um, uh, Arizona, so, so from the matchup pers- perspective here, Arizona State, the offense is a concern. And Arizona has proven, even if you want to just look at their last couple games, uh, it doesn't take them long to stretch a game to double digits. Uh, even in that UCLA game, I want to say UCLA cut it to maybe two or three. And then within two minutes, it was right back up to like 12, 11, 12. So I, I, I'm just not, I'm not going to bet against Arizona at this point. Unfortunately, I missed my opportunity. To, um, USC was on my short list on Saturday. I did not bet it. They did get the money. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to shy away from betting against Arizona, Arizona here. And actually now that the market has moved the way it has might be a little value jumping in. If you can get like 11 on Arizona state here, uh, but not a play that's going to make my card. All right. So it's, it's been a hell of a stretch for Arizona state here. What USC, they had uh, USC twice, Arizona, UCLA, and now Arizona again, but they are five and one against the number in their last six here, Tony Mia. So uh, any thoughts on backing the home dog on this one? Not really. Uh, look, Marion Jackson, the Toledo transfer, he got a really nice game the other day. He's been talking about mm. uh, his wrist being an issue this season, and it's unfortunate. Said something about, oh, well, let, let's hope that the apologies are as loud as the criticism. Why? Because you <laughs> beat UCLA and you're 7-13. and 13. <laughs> The hell out of here. Uh <laughs> Uh, look, here, here's my point with with ASU. They're, they're overachieving in terms of what they expected to have and what, you know, based on what they had last year, it's a, it's a completely different team that's not as talented. Uh, you know, Bagley, it, it, he's been trying to get healthy enough to play, hasn't, and he's going pro anyway. So I don't think we'll see Marcus Bagley this season. That ship has sailed. Obviously, Josh Christopher was a one and done. Uh, now it's selling with the Rockets. Uh, and, and, you know, other guys that are not on that team. So they've got mostly transfers, and it's Bobby Hurley's last season because he's getting fired. Uh, and, you know, good gutsy effort against uh, against the Bruins the other night and a good gutsy effort in the first half against Arizona in Tucson the other day because they were tied at the half uh, to avoid getting embarrassed. But, you know, the, the, they, they shot 20 for 61. Uh, Arizona was favored by 21 points. And then, uh, you know, came back and, and did that. And here's, here's something that you can't mask. Uh, Arizona State is one of the nation's worst three-point shooting teams. I think they're in the 350s. On their, and they shoot, uh, you know, something well under 30%. You're not going to beat Arizona. You're not even going to be on the court with them competitively for over 40 minutes uh, if you can't shoot. So that takes taking points uh, with Arizona State, even at home, out of the equation for me. Plus, Ben Matherin, uh, a National Player of the Year candidate, went 0 for 8 from three-point range against the Sun Devils uh, in that game that was uh, only a, what, a 12-point spread or something. So, uh, you know, th- he, that's not going to happen again. I do like the under here. Under is 9-2 and two in Arizona State's last 11, and Arizona probably going to lock in on the defensive end. Total's a little high for me, so my lane would be the under. All right, leaning towards the under. What do you think here, uh, Drew, expecting uh, Arizona to steamroll them here, or uh, you think there's any value with the home dog? You know, Joe, it, it's a tricky handicap, and I do agree with uh, Tony on on the under. I, the last time these two played, what, about a week ago, it finished well under the posted total. And when you're talking about the Wildcats here, Joe, playing in the tutorial, or Territorial Cup, excuse me there, Arizona, Arizona State on the hardwood here, um, they're 19-2 and two straight up. They're a really good team, and defensively, they have a lot of length. They have three guys, 6'11 or taller, two of those guys 7 foot or taller. So it's just a lot of length there. Shooting against that can be tough. And to Tony's point, Arizona State, I mean, one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country. And actually, last last time these two played, Arizona, Arizona was only three for 23 from three-point range. Speaking towards that under, if they don't hit their threes, I really like this under. The only thing with that is Arizona's a top five team tempo-wise in the country, 13-0 and at home. Only problem is they're not playing at home, four and two on the road. And head coach uh, Bobby Hurley, you know, he might be on his way out, like Tony alluded to. But this team does play better at home. The Sun Devils in Tempe. They have knocked off Utah, Grand Canyon, also UCLA just on Saturday night. So 
who knows? They've been good against the spread, like you talked about, Joe, just a team 7-13 and 13 straight up. But cashing tickets of late, a lot of times in college basketball, that's a profile that can make you money. You know, these teams under 500 that kind of ride under the radar and cash tickets against the spread. That's the Sun Devils so far. So actually, if you made me bet this, Joe, I would probably take the points. I agree with this market move. The Sun Devils at home are the side. All right, there it is. Looking at it, uh, should be another great battle, hopefully, in, uh, uh, in Arizona. But uh, sounds like uh, we're just hoping for, a, a, just like last time, less points than everyone thinks there's going to be. Arizona State taking on Arizona tonight. That leads us to our third and final game here, guys. And this one should be an awful lot of fun. How about UNC Wilmington taking on uh, Hofstra, heading out to Long Island. Hofstra opens up as a seven and a half, but I'm seeing sixes now. I am seeing the total hovering around that 145 mark in a number of spots. Both teams coming off wins. Hofstra took them uh, James Madison overtime, but got it done. and. Uh, of course, after that setback against Elon last week, over the weekend, they took care of business. William and Mary, UNC Wilmington, they have been a cash cow, no doubt about it here, Tony Mejia. Uh, if you have ridden them on this streak, it's, uh, what, 12 out of 13? Uh, they're pretty darn good here. What do you think their chances are going to uh, Hofstra here today? Well, I, I, I love uh, Hofstra because they did something that, Rarely happens uh, in my benefit. They took a game to overtime <laughs> that I had the over on, and yeah. uh, that was great because the under yeah. was was coming in. I, and and I'm president of the Aaron Estrada fan club. He is tremendous. The Oregon transfer <laughs> and he's hitting a stride, so he's he's doing really well. So I do yeah. like Hofstra, but UNC Wilmington, an interesting team. And you mentioned that loss to Elon. Man, that line stunk. One and a half Oof. points. Elon's one of the worst teams in this conference. Yeah. UNC Wilmington. You mentioned their success. And and their UNC Dubs was just a, a one and a half point favorite in that game and got beat. So and, and everybody who who plays that fishy line game uh, had that completely pegged. And this is a strange UNCW team because um, you know the, the, their head coach Takeo Siddle is a Kevin Keats uh, disciple, followed in NC State, then came back to take this job. Kevin Keats likes to push at all costs. They they run at NC State. He ran at UNC Wilmington. This uh, UNC Wilmington squad under Siddle actually plays one of the slower paces in the Colonial, uh, and they lock in defensively. They've got a lot of athletes. Uh, Michael Caru, the transfer from Florida, pretty good. Uh, Jalen Forns, who can shoot, but so somehow struggles at the free throw line. Uh, he's, out, he's out there for them. They shot 17 for 30 from three-point range against Steve Merrill's tribe. Hopefully uh, he, Steve was out there to enjoy all those threes. And they shot 17 for 25 from two over the weekend. So that, that blowout win... Uh, happened with uh william and mary actually following suit and shooting 10 for 18 from beyond the arc so nobody really was able to to stifle the other team from beyond the arc uh and i think that's going to carry over here because i think we do get a faster paced game uh than uh, unc wilmington wants to play at least uh, their current form so give me hofstra with estrada making plays down the stretch to not only win but cover late yeah, it's interesting. We're not getting a ton of movement in the total, but certainly on the side here, Drew, as uh, Wilmington, uh, Wilmington getting uh, the cash here, uh, they're already 1-0 and against Hofstra, so what are you doing a revenge spot here? They are, Joe. Of course, these two teams playing just, uh, what, about a week ago, and it finishing slightly over with uh, UNCW actually uh, winning outright as the four-point mm -hmm. underdog. So we've seen a little bit of shift in the market pricing this game. Hofstra now the, the, the heavier favorite. But, of course, being at home, that's the pride against hosting the Seahawks here, 145 being the total. And I think Hofstra kind of controls the tempo, Joe. Of course, their head coach, uh, Speedy Claxton here. Speedy is uh, something they're going to look to do tonight. And they also shoot 80% from the free throw line. So laying in a foul fest range, they're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. That points me towards Hofstra here. I think they're actually the more talented team. Eight and one at home, 12 and nine money makers against the spread as well. Each team in the 300s in terms of three point defense, guys. So it could be a little bit of a volatile. Um, kind of result here, but it's not like UNC Wilmington lights it up from the three-point line. So all of that being said, I know Wilmington 16 and six straight up, but the schedule really isn't all that uh, that that impressive. So colonial uh, matchup here, 
give me the home favorite. I like uh, I like the pride here, Joe. All right, he likes the pride here. You know, the, Wilmington is a uh, cash cow here, Trig. We know this over the last month, and I, I'm looking. They've been a favorite in some of those games, minus four, minus two. They've been a dog in a bunch of them of four or better, so they're getting six here against Hofstra. Are you buying it? Joe, I'll, I'll make this a consensus play with the boys. Uh, I lean Hofstra. Listen, I don't the, the Colonial is a little bit of a blind spot for me. Uh, I don't I don't watch or bet a ton of of CAA basketball for one reason or another. I mean, it, everyone sort of has that. It's it's very difficult to to track thirty plus conferences. So uh, you you won't see many best bets out of the Colonial for me. Uh, but in this case, I I don't understand the line move. I guess is is kind of where I'll leave it. Um, Wilmington to cut to get bet all the way down, which I think might be even five and a half in some places yeah. right now. Um, it, 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 the only thing that I guess explains it is Wilmington's just been on an absolute tear against the number, and they've made people a lot of money of late. And people are just going to continue with with Wilmington until they uh, it, until they get burned. Um, but but Hofstra. To me, is the far superior team. I, 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 you know, agree with the assessment from Drew and Tony. And this is a revenge spot. These two teams played last week. Wilmington got them outright uh, down in Wilmington. I think the the number in that game was four and a half. Um, so yeah, I think there's a little bit of revenge here. Uh, it, Hofstra getting this one at home. I, I would lay it with Hofstra. They've been obviously better at home, and I just think they're the all around better team. Line move doesn't make sense to me. I agree with the boys. Hofstra or nothing for me here. All right. Unanimous. Hofstra it is, guys. A little CAA tonight. And uh, a couple of other very intriguing games tonight on the card. So now it is time for best bets here. See if these guys like one of these games a little bit more than the other. And, Drew, you are kicking us off here, my man. Where are you going tonight on this card? Sure. The game I like the most is the first one we talked about. I'm joining my guy, uh, Jay Money is Money, out there watching in the chat box, guys. I like the Texas Longhorns here, Joe, plus one and a half. The home dog, give me that hook on the one, an all-important number there. Of course, a lower total for Kansas games, so we do get the dog there. And one of the slower teams in the country, that's the Longhorns playing at home. I think they'll have some success uh, slowing the Jayhawks down. Now, the Jayhawks are very good offensively, but going up against a good defensive squad in Texas, Chris Beard, um, I think uh, controls the tempo here. And a good point guard in Marcus Carr. And guys, guys, again, the matchup aspect of why I like the Longhorns. Yes, spot-wise, a short turnaround for the Kansas Jayhawks going on the road to Austin. But matchup-wise, the one thing they struggle at offensively is turning the ball over. That's something Texas defense is uh, very strong out. So watch, watch out for those Kansas turnovers tonight. I think it harms the Jayhawks and Texas uh, wins the game outright. Plus one and a half on the Longhorns, Joe. That's what I'm going with. UT tonight. All right. Get it done, Chris Beard and company. All right. Let's go here, Trig. Uh, I know you ain't going to the CAA, so talk to us. Where are you going on the card here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, Joe. But I am going to go down to that kind of that that CAA region, uh, just a little bigger conference down there. Uh, my best bet for the show, four percent play for me is Virginia plus the points. Um, I talked about earlier in the show how you just can't bet spots in NCAA; it doesn't really work, or at least it hasn't. But I think in this scenario, I see a great spot for Virginia, a horrible spot for Duke, and a number of other things that make that suggest that this number. It is just way too big. Uh, so first thing, let's talk about the bad spot for Duke, right? They just got done with a, a I will call it a, an eight-day stretch where they played at Louisville, at Notre Dame, and then, of course, it ends with at North Carolina over the weekend, a massive game, uh, which they, they blew out their rival Tar Heels, uh, 87-67. Uh, Duke covered all three of those games, and now they come home for a game that is – the last few years has been a huge game, uh, but not so much this year with Virginia being a little bit down from when they, where they usually are. And then they're back out on the road uh, later this week at Clemson. Uh, Virginia, listen, the Cavs, this is not your typical Virginia team. This is not your top 10 Virginia team, but they've been a little bit better than I think they're, they're getting credit for at this point. Uh, you know, they come into play today eight and five in the ACC, which is only like, maybe a half game out of third. 
in the conference. So I think Virginia's sort of been a little bit better than expected. They've won three of four. And even though there isn't, this isn't your, your sort of lights out Virginia defense that has a team in the top 10, they're still pretty good. And this total's still pretty low in the one, in the 120s. So I actually think this is a nice spot for Virginia, kind of a nothing to lose spot. I don't think many, many are giving them a chance against Duke, uh, but they have been playing pretty well. And Duke actually in for a letdown spot at home here, I think. Uh, a grueling week that was capped off by a blowout of rival North Carolina. If there was going to be a flat spot for Duke, I think it could be here. When it comes down to it, I think Virginia can hang around in this game. I always like getting a big number like 11 and a half when you've got a total in the 120s because I think there is a, a good chance that's a lower scoring game. Each of those, each of those points worth just a little bit more. Uh, so best bet for me is going to be Virginia Cavaliers. Uh, I locked it in for, for clients at 11 and a half. Uh, my guess is it probably goes to 11. So if you, if you like it, get it now. Uh, Virginia plus 11 and a half, best bet. Yeah, I, I think if Jim Laranaga never has to play another game in Virginia, he'd be very happy there. All right, Tony Mia, talk to us. You know, they just can't beat Virginia. Uh, talk to me here, uh, Tony Mia. Where are you going in this uh, these games here today? All right, well, I am going off of what we talked about and uh, to the American, though, with uh, Temple Ooh. and South Florida. Yeah. And uh, there are 358 teams in uh, D1, fellas. And I, I know you guys all know that, but our, our viewing audience probably doesn't. 358th in the country in three-point shooting <laughs> is the South Florida. Oh, you hate uh, to see it. Yeah. As a UCF guy, you really hate to see it, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so they can't, uh, they can't shoot the ball at all. They're top score Caleb Murphy is one for 15 from this on um, the season and they're running into a Temple Owl defense and we talked about this uh off air before the show started it, it really is impressive in how stifling they are um Aaron McKee who was uh, who made his money in the in the league as a, as a defender has really brought that approach uh, to coaching at, at his alma mater and they lost uh you know their top score Khalif Battle very early in the season I didn't think that they would be able to get up uh in the manner that they have and they're 13 and 7 going into this night's game uh, eight and one against the spread over their last nine games. The only teams they've lost to are Houston and SMU, which is the class of the conference. So um, I, I don't understand actually why they're only a four, four and a half point uh, favorite on the road down at the Yingling Center. Uh, but uh, that kind of scares me a little bit. Maybe USF is plucky down there and hangs around. They did beat uh, my UCF Knights convincingly down there by by uh, digging in on the defensive end and forcing UCF into probably its worst shooting performance of the season. So I'm looking for this game to be a grinder, a battle to 60. The total is at 124. Give me the under here, under 4-1 and one in USF's last five games, and a perfect 5-0 and oh in Temple's last five. Look for that to continue and give me the low side on 124-ish points. Uh, listen, if that USF team totals 55 uh, or more, I'm going under because they only see you yeah, two. They only seem to score 55 points and they max out there. Never seen a team last that uh, just takes their time missing those threes, Mejia. It's hysterical. All right, guys, let's uh, let's check out our friends from the gold sheet and see what they've got going on. Ooh, this is another big matchup here. Love it. Uh, Southern Utah taking on uh, Montana and our friends from the gold sheet. They like some points to be scored in this one, so... They are certainly looking at the over. And this is a great write-up, guys. Also, uh, this is going to be a uh, a great game here tonight. I think the line is also around two, two and a half right now for Montana. Read the write-up here, guys. You can check that out by visiting us on Twitter at Wager Talk. We post these gold sheet plays of the day uh, after each show. So definitely check them out. Head over to goldsheet.com as well. Check out all the write-ups, all the handicapping tools available to you at thegoldsheet.com. All right, tonight uh, I'm going to go, well, I'm going to go CAA because I, Trig's, uh, Trig, just for you, Trig, I know uh, you don't like, you're leaning harsh you listen to everyone else, but I'm going to go Drexel uh, here tonight who are finally home. Uh, they haven't played a home game in a uh, little while, but they're playing James Madison. I don't agree with the line move. You just, I got a better number at minus four right now. And uh, a lot of this has to do with James Madison. This is their, I believe it's their third road game now in six days. Uh, this is the second game in the last seven for Drexel. Uh, rested, finally at home. Uh, coming, uh, James Madison coming off of that uh, overtime loss to Hofstra over the weekend. 
Give me Drexel and get it done. They beat them once already. We're going to beat them again here, guys. Let's check out the best bet recap here for you guys tonight. Drew goes UT, baby. Get it done. That plus one and a half now against Kansas. That's going to be a great one. Uh, Trigg says Virginia. Uh, sorry, Duke. You're not that good. Virginia plus 11 and a half. Take the points there. Tony Mejia. Man, if you like paint drying, you are going to love this game tonight. Temple USF go under in this one, 124. I'm going to back Drexel to get it done against JMU. And our friends from the gold sheet, Southern Utah taking on Montana. Look for points, guys, over 140 and a half. And don't forget, guys, it is $9 Monday right now, which means uh, Drew Martin, Adam Trigger, uh, Tony Mejia, best bets, nine bucks, guys, right now if you head over to wagertalk.com. Take advantage. It's a huge week, certainly in college hoops. Uh, start the week off right uh, by cashing some tickets. Head over to wagertalk.com. Visit all three of these gentlemen. Just nine bucks. Best bets today at Wager Talk. And on behalf of Drew, uh, Trigg, and Tony Mejia, guys, hit that bell in the upper right hand corner. Come back and join us again tomorrow. For more college hoops here as we get ready for a huge week in college basketball. Until then, best of luck with your plays tonight, guys. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Ralph Michaels and Dave Koken are the main guests breaking down college hoops from a sports betting perspective on the Wager Talk College Basketball Tip-Off Show for a reason. Last year was the inaugural season of the Tip-Off Show, and we offered an amazing combo deal on Dave and Ralph, and many people are asking, what about this year? We heard you loud and clear, and for a limited time, if you buy one of their college basketball season passes through the national championship, we will include the other through the national championship for only a dollar. A college basketball season pass is priced at $369 per handicapper, but for a limited time, you can get both for only $1 more, locking in Dave Koken and Ralph Michaels for $370, giving you access to Dave and Ralph for nine weeks of college hoops for just over $20 per handicapper per week.